Hello. Today we'll be talking about African American history with Lois Conley, who is the founder of the Griot Museum of African American History, today on The Bernie Hayes Show. And my guest is the founder of the Griot Museum of African American History, Lois Connolly. Lois, how are you? Good morning, Bernie. I am fine. How are you? Oh, it's really good to see you. Thank you. Good to be here. Oh, tell us about the Griot Museum of African American History. Well, Bernie, as you well know, I, we are about to celebrate our 25th anniversary next year. 25th so already? we've been doing this for a little while. Wow. We Twi opened in 1997. Right. Of course, back then we called ourselves the, uh, the Griot, the Black, Black History. World History Wax, Wax Museum. Yeah. <laughs> and you were, you were, at the time, were the only two museums left. There was one in Baltimore and one here in St. Louis, right? And that, that's right. That, that continues to be the case. We're, mm -hmm. There's still only two, and we're the only one in St. Louis, only one in our region, actually. Mm -hmm. well, Ms. Connolly, well, why did you decide on a wax museum, for, especially for African-American figures? Well, you know... The whole notion of, of African American history is somewhat um, erased. The whole idea of, of sharing, of, of telling our stories just hasn't been very popular throughout history. Um, and so I knew that as we were, once it, it hit me that this is going to be my calling, I realized we needed to have a way to attract people to the museum to hear these stories. And having visited the museum in Baltimore, uh, I realized how attracted people were to the life-size wax figures. Mm -hmm. And once they were in the museum, they were, they were captured. I mean, they were asking questions they wanted to know. They were curious. And I thought that would be the hook, if you will, to yeah. get people into the museum to learn more about our stories. Okay, it was once called the Black's Wax Museum. Now, what, you changed the name to the Griot uh, of African American History. Tell you us know, why the name we, change came. Well, it was after uh, probably almost six, seven, eight years. People started after we were in existence. People were saying to us, you really need to get that name Wax out of your uh, title because it really sends a message that is not very positive. You know, Wax museums typically are those places that were the kind of horror museums, the kind of scary places to go and more kind of a fun um adventure than a, a, a learning experience, a historical learning experience. And so we listened to our, our colleagues and our visitors and our friends, and we started to think about a name that would more appropriately represent what we do. Mm -hmm. And when we, learned, we thought about the name Grio, which means, well, the short version is that it is a storyteller. Yeah. It's the persons who keep uh, the history and the culture and make sure that it gets passed on. Uh, to other people. And we thought that's exactly what we do. So that was a much more appropriate name for us. Any special presentations coming up for the 25th anniversary? We are planning. We are in the midst of planning that now. We just had a fundraiser birthday celebration uh, last weekend because I celebrated my 75th birthday. Congratulations. Happy <laughs> birthday you. to you. <laughs> Thank you. And so we're using that as our precursor to the uh, 25th anniversary. And so there will be a series of activities that will be announced on Facebook and on our website uh, throughout the next year. Where are you located and what is your Facebook page and your website? The Griot Museum of Black History is located at 2505 St. Louis Avenue. We've been there ever since our existence. We're in a beautiful 1916 building um, that was built for the archdiocese in, in that year as a, as a Catholic school. Our museum uh, phone number is 314-241-7057, and our website is thegriomuseum.com. Mm -hmm. Ms. Conley, what are the hours of operations and days and hours of operation? Well, we've been blessed to survive COVID, and now we are back to full uh, operations with regular operating hours uh, Wednesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. However, you do have to make an advanced reservation. There are no on-site uh, admissions without a reservation. Uh, so you have to go to our website and prepay for your reservation. Once again, tell and us again, our website. And again, that website is www.thegriomuseum.com. Okay. Is there a charge to, to enter the museum? 
There is a charge. Adults is for adults. That's anybody uh, 13 years and older is seven dollars and fifty cents. Mm -hmm. And children uh, and everybody under 13 is three dollars and seventy five cents. Of course, not little babies at arms, but, you know, people five years up five to 12 years old is three seventy five. Well, there, there we do typically have a group rate. We've sort of su uh, suspended group tours right now until yeah. we get a little bit more. Ahead of this curve with the with the COVID virus, but um, we will be resuming that probably in the first part of the year. I mean, as cheap as that is, it's still almost free. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Gee, How did the COVID uh, virus, the pandemic, affect the Griot Museum? Well, the very worst part of it was that we were closed for all eighteen months. Period. No, with no absolutely no visitors, no members, nobody coming able to come in uh, to the museum. So that uh, we don't have major corporate or foundation support. So for us not to be able to benefit from uh, admissions on a regular basis is quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, we managed. We got through it. We had. We were. We were fortunate enough to take advantage of some of the uh, special. Uh, PPE uh, loans um, and and a couple of smaller grants that helped us uh, uh, work through our budget for that year. So yeah, now we're, we're gradually, so. gradually mm -hmm. picking up uh, and pivoting around uh, that that whole year's loss. Yeah, I was going to ask you how you did survive. Well, you explained that, but uh, you know, in the past twenty five years, you know, you the black rep. Uh, Powell, Robert Powell, and so forth. All of you have not been getting the funding that other institutions get because you're African American. I, I'll put it out there like that. You don't get the funding that the white institutions get. Is that changing at all? I, and I want to say that it, it changed a little bit during COVID, mm -hmm. and I want to say that it probably changed a little bit because of COVID, but also because of all of the social unrest that was going on around our country uh, and, and, and in St. Louis, too. And I think people were responding to that. Um, but, you know, I think it and I don't want to make it sound trivial in saying that it was near knee jerk responses and sure. that they responded to something at the moment. I am curious to see um, how long it will last. But I can mm -hmm. say that during that last year, two years, uh, there had been a significant change in the way we were receiving funding and from whom we were receiving funding. Wow. Uh, a different demo uh, demographics of people seem to be uh, sending money to the GRIO or wanting to come to the GRIO or wanting to partner with the GRIO. And if one wanted to contribute to you, it is tax deductible, right? And how can they do so? We are an official 501c3 organization. So um, unless you are receiving something in return for your contribution, uh, everything that you donate to us is tax exempt. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and not only uh, are we looking for people to donate uh, cash, it is important also that you donate your time and your talent. Mm -hmm. What about artifacts, Ms. Connolly? That is also a challenge for us. You know, we did not start out as a collecting museum. We were more focused on how we tell our stories and then using artifacts to help support those stories. But over, as you can imagine, in 25 years, we've, be, we've developed and collected more artifacts and more items than we ever imagined. <laughs> and, in the, and we're really gr glad that we are. Um, it has not been to the extent that it, is, uh, it occurs with other institutions, the larger institutions. We still... Um, prefer to give our artifacts, our documents, our time, talent, and treasure to the white institutions. Uh, and so we're still trying to bridge that gap somewhat. Mm -hmm. But, but we're, we're, we're starting a, we've started a, an aggressive uh, oral history campaign as well because we consider those uh, part of our collection, part of, part of the artifacts, part of the things that we need to include in telling our stories. So we're looking for elders and people in the community who have stories to tell that we want to capture and pre preserve so that other people can learn from those stories. Once again, tell us how to reach you and how we and what hours. Sure. Again, we're at the Griot Museum of Black History at 2505 St. Louis Avenue. Our phone number is 314-241-7057. Our website is thegriotmuseum.com. And you can also email us at info at thegriotmuseum.com. You know, when I come back after this break, I want to come back and ask you uh, about your educational component, because I see a lot of 
small children visiting the museum ought to see the impact that you have on them and also uh, on, on the elders and people in general. So we'll be right back after this. Thank you. Uh, we'll, with Lois Connolly. We're at 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. Reverend Larry Rice have been providing services for nearly 50 years from the 1411 Locust Street location and also now from the 2428 Woodson Road location in Overland, Missouri. And we'll be back with Lois Connolly after this. We already see so many homeless people, but God only knows how many more are going to end up on the streets once the moratorium on evictions lift. So many hurting and homeless people and no place for them to go during the day, particularly in the downtown St. Louis area and even out in the county. So many hurting and homeless people left out in the streets and in the parks. Now, if we could just begin to work together to reopen 1411 Locust, things could change. We could do so many things at 1411 Locust that we're doing in Springfield at the day center we have there. So many people could be getting help at this time, as you know. New Life Evangelistic Center was closed by the Slay administration and the Crucian administration. That back in uh, April of 2017, we've waited four years. Thank God we finally got a new administration that seems very sensitive to the needs of the homeless. Now your help is needed as an advocate, as a prayer warrior, that we can get back into the 1411 Locust Building. We can do this if you'll go to God in prayer. Right now we're commissioning our architects to come up with new architectural plans. We had spent over $80,000, but each time it was being stopped by the Crucian and the Slay administration. Now with a new administration at hand, we believe that we'll be able to take steps forward to reopen this building. So homeless people that are now in the parks where they can't shower, they can't store their belongings, they can't use internet service to find jobs, they can't uh, get the meals and they, uh, they just need clean clothes and so many direct services to store their belongings alike that we could help them with here at 1411 Locust. Please go to God in earnest prayer and encourage your family and friends and everyone you know to contact our present mayor's office. I believe she cares a lot about the homeless, but she needs to know you're standing beside her and you're with her at this particular time. So please continue to pray. Please be an advocate in behalf of the homeless. I thank God for what Bernie Hayes is doing through his program. So many wonderful guests that he has. Now, will you please support our efforts as we work together to reopen 1411 Locust? And welcome back. My guest is the founder of the Griot Museum of African American History here in St. Louis, Missouri who will soon be celebrating 25 years in existence. Uh, Lois Conley is my guest. Uh, Ms. Conley, uh, the educational component of the Greer Museum, I understand young children come by, and uh, do you do anything with the public schools? And any public schools districts? Yeah, you know, in our early days, uh, the public schools were the biggest tours, the biggest visitors group that we had. That has fallen off considerably in the last oh, 10 years, I'd say. And I, I understand also it had a lot to do with some of the challenges that the school itself was, was facing in terms of accreditation and, and things like that and monies for field trips. So we are in the process, again, trying to rebuild some of those relationships and to encourage students to come and, and encourage students to bring their uh, students to the museum. One, because we understand that what they're teaching in the classroom can be supplemented by what we have to offer at the GRIO. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, we even have a, a uh, curriculum guide that is tied into the state standards that also will be a support uh, to instructors in, in the classroom. So we hope, we're hoping that uh, uh, teachers will begin to bring their students back, particularly those in the St. Louis Public School. Now, even over the past years, as that uh, St. Louis public school attendance has dwindled somewhat, mm -hmm. attendance from both private and county schools has been increasing uh, on a regular basis. So we're, we're encouraged by that. Uh, it is not nearly the level it was once for the public schools, but we see that as a positive uh, move that they are finding an interest in wanting to come to the GRIO as well. You know, I've known you for these past 25 years when you opened up the museum, and I also knew you before right. uh, you opened the Griot. Um, let's talk about Lois Connolly. You, you, your, your background is education, and I know you're strictly a business person. Tell us about Lois. Wow. I am, um, if you talk about education, I, I, you know, I have a master's degree from St. Louis University in education, um, uh, some additional hours in American Studies. I have a museum uh, certificate in graduate museum studies from UMSL. But my education really is from the community, from the neighborhood I grew up in, from the people uh, I've been able to be around all my life. Um, 
That's where I really feel the best of my education uh, background comes from. And, and I've used what I've learned by associating with those kinds of people um, to help me start and administer and sustain the GRIO. Uh, it, it, it's, not all, it's not all from books. Um, it's a lot of practical experience. It's a lot of um, asking advice from people. It's a lot of watching other people uh, do business. Uh, that's, that's who I am. I'm, I'm a people person who is very quiet, um, who is very dogmatic about getting things done, uh, and who loves, I mean, absolutely loves people, particularly black people and mm -hmm. our stories. I remember some of the setbacks and heartaches you had as you were opening, but you never gave up. You kept going forward, and now that has certainly proven to be the right thing to do. Tell us what you hope people who visit the Griot Museum of African American History will leave there with? You know, giving up just is not in my DNA. Um, I came from a background of, uh, of a poor family with eight children who lived in Mill Creek, and all I ever saw was my folks trying one thing after another to keep going. Whatever that was we were trying, they were trying to accomplish with us or for themselves or for our community was to just keep going. Um, so giving up was never an option. So what I am hoping, in particular, that young people will see when they come to the GRIO, not just as they see me and hear my story, but as they hear and see the stories of all the people who we feature in the GRIO, that you can do just about anything you want to do if you are committed to doing it. Uh, or is it going to be easy? No. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. But what makes it happen is your commitment your stick to itiveness, your ability to get to see a vision and to be willing, be committed to following through. Yes, mm -hmm. it's going to be, but there's always someone there who will help you. There are always elders who will be willing to sit and speak with you, who will share their stories with you, who will let you use their charge cards when you need to pay the electric bill. Um, there are people who will sense your genuineness and will help you uh, reach your goals. You know, I saw on the website a picture, Josephine Baker. Could you tell us about, about that photo, please, well, that, that image, the statue? Yeah, you know, Josephine Baker was one of those uh, people from St. Louis who we'd like to talk about. And the Griot primarily uh, addresses those folks who have a Missouri connection. Uh, so Josephine is one of those people. But I, if you notice, she is... We have her clothed in a, a pretty elegant setting, um, background and, and clothing, because her story is, you know, typically known as, as the person who runs around in a banana skirt and who was very risque and, all, and so on and so forth. Well, I wanted to dispel that myth that, yes, yeah, she did at some point wear a banana skirt, if you will, um, but she was a much, much more deep person, much more profound thinker, a much more uh, elegant lady than what people predicted her, uh, uh, projected her to be. And so we wanted to uh, project that same image in the museum because she was a civil rights activist. She made sure that she wouldn't, wouldn't perform in places where uh, African Americans were not allowed to attend. Um, you know, she was just much more than what the, the common story uh, yeah. predict, projects about her. And she was a philanthropist. She was a, she was a giver. Yeah. She, was, she adopted children, uh, regardless of race and color or, or anything. And she was, unfortunately, after all of her giving, um, she ended up uh, pretty much a poor person and almost uh, homeless. Um, I also saw a picture of Michael Shepard. We call him actually maybe the father of Jeff Vanderloo. Tell absolutely. us about Michael Shepard. Well, Mackler Shepard was one of those pioneers who was just a common, everyday person, um, lived in a community that was facing some uh, blight and destruction and erasure, and who decided, who said, you know, convince the community, the rest of the, some of the other residents, well, you know, we don't have to allow this to happen to us. We can take our destiny into our own hands. We can save our neighborhood. And he, he prescribed, came up with, worked with people who helped him develop a series, a session, uh, an activity, uh, ways by which this could happen. 
in, from, you know, from employing people in the neighborhood to having residents build on their own uh, properties and reuse those properties rather than tear them down and create vacant lands. And today, JVL still stands strong, um, basically because of the commitment, again, of just one person, Macklin Shepard, and the people he was able to attract to his project. JVL meaning Jeff Vanderloo. JVL Jeff Vanderloo. Okay. Now, how, once again, how can we donate to you? How can we visit the museum? How can we get more information? And how do we find about the protocols for COVID and so forth? Well, please do. Uh, now more than ever, I think, if you think about all of the things that are going on in our country, now more than ever, what we do in terms of telling the stories about humanity, the humanity stories as it relates to African American, is just more important than ever. Uh, so I am encouraging folks to help us sustain ourselves for another 25 years by making a donation to the GRIO, large or small, cash or in kind, um, volunteer, but particularly cash, because a Union Electric likes to be paid in cash. Yes. Uh, so but call us at 241-7057 or check out our website at thegriomuseum.com where you can uh, donate directly from the, from the uh, website. And that's all tax deductible. It's all tax deductible. And we take cash, we take checks, we take credit cards. What hours? And we're open Wednesday through Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. By appointment on the website, prepaid reservations are required. This is wonderful. Lois Collins, I guess, she's the founder of the Greer Museum of African American History. And we're here at the New Life Evangelistic Center, 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. And the Reverend Larry Rice has so much to tell you and so many people benefiting from his gifts and his legacy and his leadership and so forth. And we'll be right back with Lois Conley after this. The Bernie Hayes program is uh, produced at NLEC TV uh, right here at 2428 Woodson Road in Overland, Missouri. It's our new headquarters since they closed the 1411 Locust building. We're working to get back into that building. In addition to that, trying to help so many people through a wide variety of safe houses, training programs, transportation assistance, so many ways people are getting help because of all of you that are supporting the work of New Life Evangelistic Center. Now, if you'll send a gift of $25 or more, we want to send you this special, the Bernie Hayes Show Cup. And we're giving that to people. It's just a way of saying thank you. So when you send your gift, request a cup. We'll be happy to get it off to you. It's New Life Evangelistic Center, P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri. That's 63166. You can give online at nlecstl.org. Now I'm really asking all of you to join us in praying. The needs are so phenomenal at this particular time. So many hurting and homeless people are contacting us daily, but we're able to help them because of each one of you that are praying, caring, and sharing at this time. Tell your families and friends about NLEC TV and get directly involved yourself. Our Black History subject for today is Bill Cosby. William Henry Cosby was born July 12, 1937. A stand-up comedian, actor, and author's career began in 1961. In the early 1960s, several stand-up comedy records earned him the Grammy Award for Best Comedy Album from 1965 to 1970. See, my father established our relationship when I was seven years old. He looked at me and said, you know, I brought you in this world, I'll take you out. <laughs> and it don't make no difference to me because I'll make another one look just like you. <laughs> and because of my father, between the ages seven through 15, I thought my name was Jesus Christ. <laughs> To Jesus Christ! And my brother Russell thought his name was Dammit. Dammit, will you stop all that noise? And Jesus Christ, sit down! So one day I'm out playing in the rain. My father said, Dammit, will you get in here? I said, Dad, I'm Jesus Christ! He also starred in the role of the television crime show I Spy with Robert Culp, which was produced by Sheldon Leonard. Beginning in the 1980s, Cosby produced and starred in the television sitcom The Cosby Show, which aired from 1984 to 1992 and was rated as the number one show in America from 1985 through 1989. In 2014, Cosby became the subject of numerous sexual assault allegations, which became highly publicized during the Me Too movement. In 2018, Cosby was convicted of aggravated indecent assault. He was in prison until the conviction was vacated in 2021 by the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania for violating 
Cosby's Fifth Amendment and Fourteenth Amendment due process rights. Bill Cosby. Now you can take NLEC TV anywhere as you put the NLEC TV app on your iPhone or mobile device. NLEC TV is an innovative TV station that's on the cutting edge of community service. When you tune in to NLEC TV, you'll discover a television station that has been operated by previously homeless individuals who have received broadcast training through New Life Evangelistic Center's unique on-the-job training program. On NLEC TV, you'll discover wholesome family, community, renewable energy, and inspirational programming. For further information, call 314-436-2424 or go to NLECSTL.org. That's NLECSTL.org. Well, welcome back. I'm Bernie Hayes. My guest is Lois Connolly, the founder of the Griot Museum of African American History. Ms. Connolly, you could have done anything you wanted to do in life, but yet and still you chose to open the Griot Museum of African American History. Tell us once again why. Well, and you know, I'm not sure that I chose it or if I was chosen because I never grew up wanting to be a uh, director of a museum, but it just seemed to evolve. And I, I can tell you of all the things I've done in life, all the jobs I've had, this has been the most gratifying one I've ever had. Um, and I often said, I wish I had gotten into it earlier. And then I am reminded that I got into it at the time that I was supposed to, uh, that earlier might not have been the time for me and that I was just supposed to go with the flow. And so I am just um, now so engrossed in it that it consumes my life. Uh, I don't know what else I would do, even as I talk about having turned 75 recently and think I should be retiring, I don't know what I would do if I was not doing this work. Hmm. Um, and I enjoy it and feel more gratified uh, having done it than I've ever felt with anything. Are you seeking volunteers? Volunteers, you know, for the life of the Griot has been um, so, so very important. Again, because we don't have major funding, we don't have major uh, financial support, a lot of what we are able to accomplish and have been able to accomplish over these past 25 years has been because we've had really good volunteers. Now that has dropped off consistent uh, uh, pretty much because of COVID uh, and we haven't been meeting and, but we're in the process again of uh, restructuring our volunteer team and getting them back into the fold and giving them assignments that they handle pretty much on their own. They just, again, they become a a dedicated, committed group of volunteers who want to see the griots survive. And so we're looking forward again to building that um, volunteer core. And we invite people who have some time or some interest or some ideas that they would like to see implemented to share those with us. Uh, again, by reaching us at their phone number at 314-241-7057 or at uh, thegriotmuseum.com. One, one, uh, no, another thing I want to ask you about is that... Uh, the people that uh, are in the displays, the displays, are you still going to create some more displays anytime in the near future? We will create more. And as a matter of fact, you know, we, we have a long list. There are many, many people who deserve to be and whose stories ne need to be told through the Griot Museum. Right. But it costs money to do that. Sure. And the only way that gets done is that someone funds what we call funds an exhibit. Right. Uh, and so you have to reach out to us, let us know who that person is, and be willing then to help raise the money to do that. And very briefly, tell us about this wonderful 25th anniversary coming up. Well, we are planning a number of things, including some book signings and some, of course, it'll be, it'll in involve some major fundraising. Uh, we have some things we need to do at the GRIO in terms of maintaining and, and upgrading the facility, um, making our, our, our presentations um, what do they call it, more digitized and available for online access. So we will, a lot of it will, will deal with uh, fundraising and capacity building, but a lot of it also will deal with fund building, friend building. And so we want, have, we want to attract people to come to the GRIO who are there with us for the long haul. Um, we will be having some public programs, and there are a lot of those are in the works, but as, as the year unfolds, you will see some of that uh, published on our website. Lois Conley, it's always a pleasure seeing you, always a pleasure talking to you. Every time I talk to you, I learn more, too. Thank and we you. want to support the Griot Museum of African American History. And thank you so much for taking time out to come visit us here at the New Life Evangelistic Center. And good luck with the future plans of the 
25th anniversary of the Great Old Museum of African American History and anything you do in the future. Thank you so much, Lois. Thank you for having us, Bernie, and thank you for sticking with us. Oh, it's my pleasure. And thank each and every one of you for viewing and supporting Channel 24.2, The New Life Evangelist, etc. I'm Bernie Hayes. Until next time, please stay safe.